Today, we'll talk another Brent Marks versus Kyle Larson showdown, plus Wednesday's at Lucas show at Davenport and more. Let's go. Today is Thursday, July 7th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. I caught hell from a YouTube commenter on my show last week about Brent Marks being Kyle Larson's kryptonite during PA Speed Week. Larson did have mechanical issues at Grandview and a flat tire at Port Royal that spoiled those two races for him, but at Lincoln and Hagerstown, Larson just flat got beat by the 19. Both times, Larson was leading late in the feature, and both times, Marks ran him down and beat him for the wins. That's not something we've seen a whole lot with Larson over the last few years, let alone twice in one week. The commenter said it was BS that I called it that way and accused me of using that idea just to get views. Uh, and he is correct. I am trying to get more views. Why be on YouTube if you don't want views? But I completely disagree about his other points. It had been a few years since Larson went completely winless during PA Speed Week. And it's a big deal when one guy seems to have the keys to beat you multiple times over a couple of day stretch. Never mind the fact that Marks had five wins and never finished off the podium that entire week. And I get that there were plenty of other talented drivers in those fields. I mean, you, you want to talk about Anthony Macri and, and, you know, all of the other guys, Christopher Bell and all the other guys that were in those uh, races. But nobody has had the success on dirt over the past several seasons that Larson has had between the midget, the sprint car, the late model, if you want to bring in his pavement exploits as well. And I say all of this to set up last night's racing at Lernerville. $25,000 was on the line for the Don Martin Memorial Silver Cup, and both drivers were in the all-star field. With what we'd seen the previous week, a clash between the two seemed almost inevitable, and both were in the night's dash. Marks ended up winning it to earn the pole, while Larson went 7th to 6th, so he started 6th in the feature. And once green in the main event, Marks was able to jump to the lead over Hunter Schoenberg, but it didn't take Young Money long to get into the fight. He was quickly to second by lap four, and it ended up driving by Marks on the outside to take the lead on lap seven. From there, the 57 led the rest of the way, holding Marks uh, off through a few restarts and even some late mistakes. It was Larson's second career Silver Cup win, and he's now one for one in 22, uh, 2022 in all-star starts. One start, one win. Uh, Marks has been absolutely on fire lately, but Larson was just better last night. Marks settled for second with Justin Peck in third, and I, that podium was really important for Peck as he's now closed the gap to Tyler Courtney for the All-Star points lead down to just 24. That's only 12 positions here at two points per position. Sunshine ended up in the work area last night after problems and contact with Cy Lynch. He did drive back to 10th, though, at the end. The series gets to day off before they head to Ransomville on Friday and Stateline Speedway on Saturday. A couple of other notes from last night. The Brian Grove 28 sprint car was there with Tim Schaefer back behind the wheel. Remember, we talked yesterday about Brandon Spithaller departing that car. Also, Snow Racing uh, was in attendance with Carson Short in the 7 car that had been uh, driven by Scott Boguski. Obviously, we talked yesterday as well about Boguski departing that Snow Racing ride. The Lucas Oil Light Model Dirt Series was also in action last night with a stop at Davenport Speedway before they head to Deer Creek for three nights. Uh, with what we saw the previous weekend and his past success at Davenport with the Outlaws, I really thought Brandon Shepard would be the guy to be last night, but he ended up being basically a non-factor. He started 12th and finished 9th on the night. He gave up ground to both Tim McCready, who finished 6th, and Ricky Thornton Jr., who hard charged from 23rd to 7th after needing to use a provisional to make the field. Out front, we ended up with a really good three-way fight for the win between Hudson O'Neill, Brandon Overton, and Mike Marler. And I'm sure if you were on social media last night, you saw a lot of people singing praises for Davenport Speedway. And Davenport you know, has the, the bigger half-mile configuration. They've got the smaller configuration that they raced on last night. And that smaller configuration is super racy. All three of those guys ended up leading laps, but at the end, it was O'Neill uh, who was able to get away for the win at the end with Overton second and Marler third. It was Hudson's first Lucas win since the Pittsburgher 100 back in October of 2021. He's been really solid, though, as of late with a prelim top five at Lernerville. He had a third at Portsmouth and two second place finishes at Muskegon County. After having such a strong season a year ago, he had six wins. Uh, I feel like he's almost disappeared a little bit in 2022. We've certainly been talking about a lot of other guys and not Hudson O'Neill. The win last night did bump him up to fifth in the standings up over uh, Earl Pearson Jr. So maybe he's on his way to more good finishes coming up. The next two nights at Deer Creek are full programs with the features paying $5,000 to win. I'm guessing, though, these won't be points nights. Uh, a lot of these prelim nights, like I said, with Lucas are not points nights. So we shouldn't see movement in the standings until after Saturday's $50,000 to win race. 
This will be the first appearance for Lucas at Deer Creek since 2018 when Jonathan Davenport was the winner. Superman is expected to be in attendance this weekend as well. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula likes Shepard tonight. I feel like we, we've been getting this a lot uh, with from the prediction formula with Shepard, but uh, he is the favorite tonight from the formula, and he does have past success at Deer Creek with the Outlaws. I'll go Davenport tonight, though. Why not here? Those guys have had a couple of weeks off. They've had a couple, you know, a couple of really big wins uh, this year. Obviously, the Eldora Million and others. Uh, I think he uh, might be a, a decent pick here for the win. Shepard currently in the Lucas standings has just 30 points on McCready with RTJ 200 back in third. Those guys did put more ground between themselves and fourth place Tyler Herb. Turbo had issues and ended up 19th last night. I also wanted to mention Nick Hoffman here. He made his first Lucas appearance last night driving a second car for Shannon Babb. We hadn't seen him in a, in a late model with Lucas since Batesville last August. He finished 16th last night after starting 14th. Tonight's opener at Deer Creek will be live on both Flow Racing and Mav TV Plus. And talking about Nick Hoffman, he's a guy I'd like to see more often in late model competition. He's such a good driver, and his knowledge of the modified chassis, you know, his setup, you know, the setup information he has, the the aerodynamics things he does with his modifieds, all that information that he has is so good. All of that knowledge, and you'd think that that, that technical ability would transfer over well to the late model side of things, with just how kind of, and you know, how much engineering focus there is now on these late models. And I'd also written down in my notes a few weeks ago about Cy Lynch kind of being in that same situation. He grabbed a podium with the All-Stars at Sharon back on June 14th, and I wonder if he's a guy that could run well more often uh, if he had more regular starts with the bigger series. We've seen him lead laps in outlaw competition, and he's always strong in weekly racing at Lernerville. And so I'm curious, who's a driver or a few drivers you'd like to see move up, whether it's in a late model, modified, sprint car? Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts of somebody around the country, maybe a local guy, a regional guy, somebody you'd like to see maybe run full-time with the Outlaws or the All-Stars or Lucas or USAC. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, there's been a lot of movement lately with drivers and teams switching things up. And uh, we had a change out west yesterday with PJ Peterson posting that Sean Becker and Cook Motorsports had parted ways following Monday's race at Chico. Becker had two top fives and four top tens in 11 starts with Cook, and now he's off to try and find other rides for the remainder of 2022. The Cook team uh, will be back this week at Skagit with Chase Magic in the car. There are eight items on today's streaming schedule. Dirt Vision has the Summer Nationals from Macon. Flow Racing has the Lucas Light Models from Deer Creek. Weekly Action from Marshalltown and Flow 24-7. Map TV Plus has the Lucas uh, Light Models as well. And Speed Sport has racing from Lee County, Victory Lane, and Kosuth County. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. I have the if you if you see when I pop up the the streaming schedule or maybe the podcast page on these page or on on these shows, there's a box that pops up in the bottom corner that's a newsletter sign up, and I, I have something like six or seven hundred newsletter subscribers at this point, but I don't do a lot with that newsletter, and I would like to start doing something. If you have suggestions of things you would like to get in a newsletter, maybe daily, weekly, something like that, drop me a comment, shoot me an email, shoot me you know a tweet or a, a DM or something about something that might interest you to get in uh, in your email. I'd like to. Be be able to use that a little bit more. Uh, that's it for the show today. Have a good Thursday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.